In this lesson, we will examine the option of using more than one variable when solving word problems. In this example, we have apples selling for 75 cents each and bananas selling for 50 cents each. Leela bought 20 pieces of fruit and we want to determine how many apples she bought. Let's first solve this using one variable. Now since the total cost of the fruit was $13, we can write the word equation, the cost of the apples plus the cost of the bananas equals $13, which we will write as 1300 pennies to avoid using decimals. To determine the cost of the apples and the cost of the bananas, we'll apply the following formula. Now to apply this formula, we need the price of each item, which we have, and we need the quantities purchased, which we don't have. Now the question asks us to find the number of apples purchased, so let's let A represent the number of apples purchased. Now what about the number of bananas purchased? What will that equal? Well if Leela purchased 20 pieces of fruit altogether, and the number of apples is A, then 20 minus A must equal the number of bananas purchased. Now that we've expressed the quantities as algebraic expressions, we can apply the formula to determine the total cost of the apples and the total cost of the bananas. The cost of the apples will be 75 cents, the price per apple, times A, the number of apples. The cost of the bananas will be 50 cents, the price per banana, times 20 minus A, the number of bananas. This sum is equal to 1300 cents. Now that we have an equation, we can solve it for A. First we'll expand the left hand side, and then simplify the left hand side. From here, when we subtract 1000 from both sides, and divide both sides by 25, we get A equals 12. This means that Leela bought a total of 12 apples. Notice that an important step here was to recognize that if A is equal to the number of apples, then the number of bananas must equal 20 minus A. If we were unable to recognize that, then we could have also solved the question by using two variables. Let's do that. To begin, we can let A equal the number of apples purchased and let B equal the number of bananas purchased. Once again, we'll use the word equation and apply this formula to determine the total cost of the apples and the total cost of the bananas. The total cost of the apples will be 75A, the total cost of the bananas will be 50B, and these two costs must add to 1300 cents. At this point we have an equation, but we can't yet solve it for A since the equation has two variables. In fact, there's a rule that says if you have n variables, then you need n equations if you want to solve for those variables. So since we have assigned two variables, A and B, we need to write a second equation to accompany the first equation. To do this, we can use this information that tells us that there are 20 pieces of fruit all together. So we can write the equation A plus B equals 20. At this point, we have a system of two equations. To solve this system, we can take the first equation and simplify it by dividing both sides by 25. Then we'll take the second equation and multiply both sides of it by 2. At this point, if we subtract the bottom equation from the top equation, we get A equals 12, which means Leela bought a total of 12 apples. Alright, now let's examine another question from a previous lesson. In this question, we are given information about the ages of Larry, Moe and Curly, and we want to find Larry's age. Now in the previous lesson, we solved the question using one variable. Now let's solve it using more than one variable. So let's let M represent Moe's age, let L represent Larry's age, and let C represent Curly's age. Since we have assigned three different variables, we will need three different equations in order to solve for each of these variables. Now to begin, let's use the fact that Larry is five years older than Moe. This means that if we take Moe's age, M, and add five to it, the result will equal Larry's age, L. Next, if Curly is twice as old as Larry, then if we take Larry's age and multiply it by 2, the result will equal C, Curly's age. Finally, we are told that the sum of their ages is 95, so we can write the following equation. At this point, we have three equations with three variables. Now, we could solve the system and get the following results, but as you can imagine, this would take a lot of work. 
The point of these examples is to show that we can solve word problems using one variable or more than one variable. However, when we use more than one variable, it's possible that it will take longer to solve the resulting system of equations. So as a general guideline for solving word problems using an algebraic approach, it's a good idea to begin with one variable in mind, but if the relationships between the unknown values are complex, you should consider switching to more than one variable. Just remember that if you assign n different variables, you will need to write n different equations in order to solve for each variable. In this lesson, we'll examine questions in which we are given information about people's ages in the past and or in the future. Now in the question shown here, we are given information about the present ages of Sue and Marco, and we are given information about their ages four years in the future. To solve this question, we'll create a table with the two given time periods as columns. So we'll have a column for present ages and a column for ages four years in the future. Now let's begin with the information concerning their present ages. We are told that Sue is eight years older than Marco. So let's assign a variable to the smaller value, which is Marco's age. Let's let M represent Marco's present age. Now since Sue is eight years older than Marco, her age will be M plus eight. Now please note that we could assign a different variable to Sue's age. However, the given information here does not appear complex enough to warrant this. As you may recall from an earlier lesson, when solving questions algebraically, it's typically easier to use one variable. But if the relationships between the unknown values are complex, then you should consider switching to more than one variable. Now even though the relationships between the ages in this question are not very complex, we'll first solve the problem using one variable, and then we'll go back and solve it using two variables. All right, back to the question. Once we have assigned variables to Marco's present age and Sue's present age, a common mistake is to then move on to the information about their ages four years in the future. However, doing so at this point is unnecessary. It's important to recognize that if we know the present ages of Marco and Sue, then we can easily determine their ages four years in the future. To find Marco's age four years in the future, we simply take his present age, M, and add four to it. Similarly, to find Sue's age four years in the future, we take her present age, M plus eight, and add four to it. Now that we have completed our table, we can examine the information about their future ages. Now from our table, we can see that in four years, Marco's age will be M plus four, and Sue's age will be M plus eight plus four. Our goal at this point is to create an equation that we can solve. So at the moment, can we see that these two quantities are equal? The answer is no, since the question tells us that in four years, Sue's age will be twice that of Marco's age. So to make these two quantities equal, and thus create an equation, we can take Marco's age and multiply it by two at which point the two quantities will be equal, and we now have an equation that we can solve for m. From here, we'll expand the left-hand side and simplify the right-hand side. Then, if we subtract m from both sides and then subtract 8 from both sides, we get m equals 4. Now that we know that m equals 4, it's important that we don't make the mistake of choosing answer choice A. Keep in mind that the question asks us to find Sue's present age, and earlier we said that her age equals m plus 8. So if m equals 4, we can replace m with 4 to see that Sue is presently 12 years old, so the correct answer here is C. Okay, now let's solve the same question using two variables. Here we'll let m represent Marco's present age, and we'll let S represent Sue's present age. Now that we have assigned variables to their present ages, it's easy to see that in four years, Marco's age will be M plus four, and Sue's age will be S plus four. Now that we have completed our table using two variables, we need to use the given information to write two equations. 
Let's begin with the information about their present ages. The table tells us that Marco's present age is M and Sue's present age is S. Now since Sue is 8 years older than Marco, we cannot yet say that M and S are equal. To create an equation, we'll take Marco's age, M, and add 8, which will then allow us to conclude that M plus 8 must equal S. Now that we have an equation, we can rewrite it in a familiar format by first subtracting M from both sides and then rearranging the terms to get this. Okay, so that's one equation. To create a second equation, we'll use the information about their ages four years in the future. Now the table tells us that in four years, Marco's age will be M plus 4 and Sue's age will be S plus 4. Our goal, once again, is to create an equation. Now the question tells us that in four years, Sue's age will be twice that of Marco's age. So to make these two quantities equal, and thus create an equation, we can take Marco's age, the smaller value, and multiply it by 2, at which point the two quantities will be equal. Now to rewrite this equation in the same format as our first equation, we'll first expand the left-hand side, then we'll subtract 4 from both sides, then subtract 2m from both sides, and then rearrange the terms. Great, at this point we have two equations. To solve this system of equations, we can use either substitution or the elimination technique. To use the elimination technique, we need only subtract the bottom equation from the top equation. When we do this, the s's cancel out, leaving us with m equals 4. So Marco's present age is 4. Since Sue is 8 years older than Marco, Sue's present age is 12, which means the correct answer here is once again C. Now as you can see, the solution using two variables takes a lot more time than the solution using one variable. So be sure to use multiple variables sparingly. Okay, now let's solve another age question. Once again, we'll solve the problem using one variable and then we'll go back and use two variables. First, the one variable approach. Now in this question, we are given information about present ages and ages 11 years in the past. So let's create a table with both time periods as columns. We'll begin with the information about their present ages. Now, as I mentioned in a previous lesson, it's often useful to assign the variable to the smallest unknown value. However, this sentence merely tells us that the sum of their ages is 42, so it's hard to tell who's older. However, notice that the second sentence here tells us that Abby is older than Iris. So let's assign a variable to Iris's age since she is younger. Let's let I represent Iris's present age. Now if I equals Iris's age, and we know that the sum of their ages is 42, then we know that Abby's present age must be 42 minus I. Now that we know their present ages, we can easily determine their ages 11 years ago. To find Abby's age 11 years ago, we take her present age, 42 minus I, and subtract 11 from it. Likewise, to find Iris's age 11 years ago, we take her present age, I, and subtract 11 from it. Now that we have completed our table, let's create an equation using the information we have about their ages 11 years ago. Here's Abby's age 11 years ago, and here's Iris's age. These ages are not equal, since the question tells us that Abby's age is three times that of Iris's age. So if we take Iris's age, the smaller value, and multiply it by 3, then these two values will be equal, and we have an equation. All we need to do now is solve this equation for i. So first we'll simplify the left-hand side, and then expand the right-hand side. Then we'll add i to both sides, and then add 33 to both sides. Finally, we'll divide both sides by 4 to get i equals 16. Now before you select answer choice A, remember that the variable i represents Iris's present age, not Abby's age. Now the table tells us that Abby's present age is 42 minus i, 
And since i equals 16, we'll plug that into our equation to see that Abby's present age is 26. Now the question asks us to find Abby's age two years from now. So in two years, she will be 28. So the answer here is E. All right, now let's use two variables to solve the same question. Here, we'll let A represent Abby's present age, and we'll let I represent Iris's present age. From here, we can complete the table. If Abby's present age is A, then her age 11 years ago was A minus 11. And if Iris's present age is I, then her age 11 years ago was I minus 11. At this point, we'll use the given information to create two equations that we can solve for A and I. To begin, we are told that their present ages add to 42. So we can write A plus I equals 42. Now let's examine the information about their ages 11 years ago. Here's Abby's age 11 years ago, and here's Iris's age 11 years ago. These ages are not equal, since the question tells us that Abby's age is 3 times Iris's age. So if we take the smaller value here, Iris's age, and multiply it by 3, then these two values will be equal, and we now have our second equation. To simplify this equation, let's expand the right-hand side, then subtract 3i from both sides, and then add 11 to both sides to get the following. At this point, we can take these two equations and solve the system. One way to do this is to first take the top equation and multiply both sides by 3. The bottom equation will leave as it is. From here, if we add the two equations, the i's cancel out, leaving us with 4a equals 104. Then, when we divide both sides by 4, we see that a is equal to 26. This tells us that Abby's present age is 26. Since the question asks us to find Abby's age two years in the future, the correct answer here is e, 28. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned to solve word problems involving past and future ages by first creating a table with the given time periods. Then we create one or more equations depending on the number of variables used. And then once we've solved the equation or equations, we'll recheck the question to ensure that we have obtained the correct information.